Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 26, 2023. Let's get into it. And, you know, normally I have some commentary before I get into anything. If you don't understand that there's a genocide taking place in uh, Gaza, let's just cut right to the first clip. This is a Gaza bakery. Now, I, I want you to envision, let's say that you live in New York and you have your own pizza place and you're cooking pizzas and, uh, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> God, these poor people, and uh, and and the the entire Gaza area is just being obliterated, and uh, and no 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 thought for civilian life. Uh, I guess uh, the next thing I'm just going to get into the next video. This is Nigeria for Palestine, and uh, they're talking about Western media lies. My God, our media is like Pravda these days. <laughs> I mean, we were worse than the Soviet Union. You're not being told a single truth. Let's watch that video. I said Israeli forces were violating human rights and called on Nigerian government to review its relations with Israel. Muslim groups in Nigeria are also drumming support for Palestinians and holding street demonstrations, calling on world leaders to hold Israel accountable for war crimes. Palestinian Ambassador Abdallah Abu Shawish spoke to journalists here in the Nigerian capital, basically painting a grim picture of the devastation the conflict between Israel and Hamas was causing millions of people. It is a, a wake-up call for all the southern states. If you accept trampling the international law, violating the UN Charter, and turned your back to the current massacre conducted against the innocent Palestinian people. The majority of the Western media participated and spread Israeli propaganda, especially the story of rap of Israeli women and the, and the beheading of children, which is absolutely untrue. He said nearly 6,000 Palestinians have been killed, including more than 2,000 children in the ongoing war, and that about 1.4 million people are now displaced in the Gaza Strip. The ambassador raised concerns about the weakening of basic health care services as a result of attacks on hospitals. He also said Western media participated in war propaganda and are broadcasting falsehoods to favor Israel. Tensions between Israel and Hamas escalated this month after Hamas fighters on October 7th launched a surprise attack on southern Israel. Timothy Obiezu, RT, Abuja, Nigeria. Ah, wasn't that interesting? Wasn't that interesting? So let's get into some of my own commentary. Uh, these are some posts that I put up on X here recently. Uh, this was very interesting. The Russian defense minister... Shergi Shogu is talking about a new weapon that has inflicted great losses on the Ukrainian Air Force in the past week. He, re he is reporting that his forces intercepted 24 aircraft in the last five days. And, of course, I'm asking my um, ex-community, 
Because, by the way, I'm getting a lot of uh, Chinese, <laughs> Russians. <laughs> Maybe I should be a little bit worried because they're all following me on uh, X right now. Uh, and, but I, I tell you what, I get some great feedback from them, and I kind of find out what's going on with the war in Ukraine. And uh, and now I'm, I'm getting actually some Israelis following me. And uh, so I, you know, and so that's why I asked these questions. And I said, what the hell is going on? <laughs> is this is this some sort of new... Uh, what did I say? New weapon. Poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear. And that's what we did. Uh, anytime you want to poke Russia, um, it doesn't seem to turn out well in, as far as history goes. I mean, you think about Napoleon, well, Germany. You know, nobody seems to uh, do well against Russia in the end. By the way, I got the results of my latest poll. It says, what has been the greatest disaster in the history of the United States? And my question was, the American Civil War... That got zero. <laughs> that was shocking to me. <laughs> zero for the American Civil War. The Pearl Harbor attack, which I, wow, that was only 3%. And then, of course, 9-11, which was where I got tossed into the uh, 2023 war over in Iraq. That only got 13%. And this is the amazing one. The Biden administration got 84 <laughs> percent oh my god i mean i was i was just putting out this stupid sarcastic poll but i and i didn't think that it would come out this way but anyway that's that was kind of kind of it let's get to the the next to last video here um and this is a long one and i'm sorry that you know it's not my material i'm stealing from rt uh but this is this is you know, if you recall i mean Biden kind of ran as a centrist. Uh, he was going to bring the country together. Uh, he was for peace in the world. Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk about uh, committing the opposite on everything. And so this is RT, you know, and uh, and I want you to look at what's happening in the world. I mean, my God, we, we're, we're in Ukraine. We're at war in the Middle East. Uh, we got two carrier groups parked off the coast. Uh uh, who knows? Uh, we got we got bases, and from what it, I guess it was redacted, I haven't watched the video, but they said that eighteen uh, attacks were carried out on U.S. bases in the Middle East uh, today. Uh, I mean, shit! I know. the the stuff is hitting the fan, man. The stuff is hitting the fan. So this is uh, this is uh, uh, the disastrous, and of course we had the disastrous pullout from Afghanistan. Let's watch that video right now to the American people, but to the world. And we'll lead, not merely by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. Yes. We'll be a strong and trusted partner for peace, progress, and security. And that idea of being a peacemaker is one he's continued to push. But let me tell you that I have been engaged in trying to work with how we can bring more stability and peace in the Middle East. But as President of the United States, my job is to bring peace if I can. Peace if I can. His report card looked pretty solid in the first few months. He pulled all U.S. troops from Afghanistan, ending the country's longest war. He ended combat missions in Iraq. But that turn as peacemaker didn't last. In fact, Washington's now been accused of pulling the plug on early peace negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. During the peace talks in March 2022 in Istanbul, Ukrainians did not agree to peace because they were not allowed to. They had to coordinate everything they talked about with the Americans first. Now Biden finds himself possibly sleepwalking into a conflict in the Middle East with several potential fronts. I apologize, I have to go to the situation with another issue I have to deal with. Wake up, Mr. President! As he stood side by side with Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu, Biden was given the cold shoulder by Arab leaders. Arab nations are also rising up in anger. U.S. military bases attacked in Syria. The country's embassy set on fire in Lebanon. The U.S. is preparing to fight back. This is not what we want, not what we're looking for. We don't want escalation. Is, we is, don't want to see a second or third front develop. Uh, we don't want to see our forces or our personnel come under fire. But uh, if that happens, we're ready for it. Don't you think President Biden needs to play a role to 
towards peace instead of saying that he could handle two wars at a time? Does that give a good impression to fight two wars at a time instead of working towards peaceful things? From the beginning of this administration, we have been working for a more integrated, cooperative, peaceful, stable, and prosperous Middle East. All of this will be done in the name of the Biden administration under the name of a man who says he's a peacemaker. But what's the real reason the U.S. vetoed the U.N. Security Council's resolution for pause in hostilities in Gaza last week? You guessed it, nothing personal, just business. I'm going to send to Congress an urgent budget request to fund America's national security needs, to support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine. It's a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. Help us keep American troops out of harm's way. Help us build a world that is safer, more peaceful, more prosperous for our children and grandchildren. And we're not just talking about a small chunk of change here. The defense industry in the U.S. is worth billions of dollars to the country's economy. Just these four weapons manufacturers have added almost 30 billion U.S. dollars in value to their assets since Israel began its war on Gaza. That's in just two weeks. While ramping up production could mean more jobs on the factory floor, even that hasn't been enough to whet the American appetite. Instead, they're finding being force-fed moral war after moral war a bit too much. So time to spice it up a little. No, it's not just about them. It could be about us. The boogeyman could be around the corner. When we give older equipment, to the Ukrainians, for example. We are rebuilding our industrial base in this country for the more serious big power threat in Asia. While Biden is trying to paint himself as an international man of action, at home he's not too popular. Ramping up the defense industry is one way to plug a leaky economy. But the truth is Americans aren't buying it. Whether Biden is re-elected or not next year, those words he said in January 2021 ring hollow. The US is for many an untrustworthy partner that's not sought out peace. It's just looked to line its own deep pockets. All right, so that was it. That was it. And I, I, I want to get back to my own commentary. Uh, if you didn't know, and Carl Douglas McGregor pointed out today that you know, Turkey is not really, I mean, they're, they're in NATO, supposedly, but they're not really our ally, and they are really lining up against the, uh, what's going on with the genocide that's taking place in um, Gaza. And uh, he pointed out, we've got bases there, and guess what's on those bases? Nuclear missiles. Nuclear missiles. And uh, he said, you know, if Turkey decides to make a move, they could come into those bases and get those nuclear missiles, and there's not a damn thing we could do about it. What are you going to do? You, you've got 2,000 Marines parked on the ships outside of, uh, 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 well, I guess, um, whatever, uh, the, the uh, Gaza. Are they going to be able to run over to Turkey and save those bases? I don't think so. So this is a very precarious situation. We need to pull those nuclear missiles out of Turkey right now because uh, they're making rumblings. So we'll see. Uh, let's get back to just a little bit of commentary before I finish off this video. I'm sorry, it, got, it gets long-winded, man. You, just, you can only do so much. Uh, let's see. I truly believe that the globalists have used Biden as the Manchurian candidate. You ever watch that movie? Definitely check out the Manchurian candidate. His administration is being used as unwitting assassins of the United States. Uh, we can see that with our open borders. And by the way, I do expect we're going to have some serious terrorist attacks here in the United States. You're, you're looking at another 9-11 event. Once uh, Israel uh, goes into Gaza, I think all bets are off. I think this whole damn thing's just going to explode uh, across the Middle East, and we'll see what happens. And then, of course, I did post a video, uh, a hiking video. You might want to watch that. And then my last uh, piece of the video will be this. Uh, while all attention is focused on genocide taking place in Gaza, let us refocus on Ukraine. The Russians have developed a new long-range kamikaze drone. I mean, in addition to this new thing that just took out all the planes, they got a new kamikaze drone named ITALA. 
Italmas. Italmas. I don't know. Maybe that's some sort of Greek uh, god or something. Uh, and uh, the new drone will be very difficult to detect by Ukraine and NATO forces. Keep poking the bear. So let's just finish off the video right there. Um, this is the protest that are taking place in France, Ramallah. I just showed you the very beginning, but this is going on all over the world. All over the world. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. The whole world hates Israel and the United States. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna... Cut you down.